Looks that my year in Australia is about to over. It's time to go home. How do you? How do you? Goodbye, kangaroos. I'm in the Brisbane airport. It's half past 11, which means my visa expires in 30 minutes. But my flight to Bali departs tomorrow at 10 a.m. So I will spend the whole night here, which is okay, because now I have time to explain what's my plan for the next few weeks in Indonesia. I will arrive to Bali on the 3rd of January, Friday, and I spend the weekend there. That's all I know for sure in Indonesia. After Bali, I take a ship to the eastern edge of Java Island and I'm going to end up in the western edge, namely Jakarta. The challenge here is that I'm not going to make any plans or bookings for more than one day in advance. Because I don't want to be determined about where to stay and where to go next. I haven't even booked the outbound flight ticket from Jakarta. My only restriction is that on the Chinese New Year, which will be on the 25th of January, I already know that I will be in Kaohsiung, Taiwan. But before that, I want to experiment with this spontaneous travel style and see what are the pros and the cons of it. Now I still have lots of hours left in Brisbane. So I also can explain how I'm going to find accommodations during my journey. I spend most of my nights in hostels and I use booking.com to find them. What I used to do before is I sorted the results by price and then picked the first hostel that included breakfast, so that I had a cheap bed and free food. But as time went by I realized two things. First of all, the free food provided by a cheap hostel was usually either really bad, or not enough, or both. So I always had to go and buy more food short after I finished the free breakfast, for money. And second, if I stayed in the hostel for the whole day, I was too late to get up before the breakfast time was over. I could have set my alarm, but the breakfast was not attractive enough to make that sacrifice. Now I have different priorities. I still start by sorting the hostels by price, but then the most important thing is that my room has to have less than 8 beds. That's because I think that 7 strangers in my room are too many. And it's easier to get connected with other people if there are only a few of them, like 4 or 6 bed dorms would be already acceptable. What other things I used to check? That depends. I usually check the ratings, I read some of the reviews, and I look at the photos of the room. Or if it's hot season, then I'm looking for air conditioner. If I arrive very late or depart really early, then I check the distance from the bus station or train station. In general, my method for choosing a hostel became more sophisticated than it was before. And that's something I cannot say about the other platform I'm using, the Couchsurfing. What I'm doing here is creating a public trip.
and that's all. I used to filter the users to the ones that are accepting guests and logged in in the last month and I used to write direct requests for the ones that sounded alright, but I realized it's just a waste of time. With very few exceptions I got either ignored or declined, which was not good, so I will not do that anymore. I mean the users can see when I will be there, they can check my profile, if that doesn't convince them then I silently accept my fate and I won't keep trying. So yeah, these are my new strategies to find accommodation. Let's see how it works in real life. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bali, where the local time has just gone quarter to two. For everyone's safety, please keep your seatbelt fastened and the aisles are next to clear until the seatbelt sign is switched off. And after that I finished Bali. I took a bus. I took a bus from the Ubung bus terminal to the town called Gilimanuk, that's on the western edge. That's where the ferry goes from Bali to Java Island. And on Java Island I had a private tuk-tuk to the town of Banyuwangi because everybody else from the ferry used motorbike. And the tuk-tuk brought me to the Banyuwangi bus terminal where I took another bus which went to Malang. What I did with couchsurfing is I spread public trips all around Eastern Java and I thought that wherever I'm getting the most welcoming invitation from I will go to that town and the winner of this competition was the town called Malang. So I will be shown around Malang in the next few days, one or two or three. And I think it's really interesting because I have no idea what's in Malang. Let's see. Alright, that one is the volcano of the Bromo mountain. I was driving this motorbike from there all the way to here and I'm going to walk up from this point to the crater. Yeah. fun. Now it's Monday afternoon and I'm in Yogyakarta. Yesterday I went to the city center and I think I got scammed with the fake civet cat poo coffee. I'm not sure but I tasted it and it was nothing special so it's hard to decide if it was real or not but I don't think so. Anyway I bought my flight ticket to Taipei. I will fly in one week next Monday and here is my plan for the upcoming week. Tomorrow I take a bus to Samarang, when I made this public trip spreading all around Java on Couchsurfing, then Samarang was the other city next to Malang, where I had a lot of invitations, so I will spend there two days and then take a train to Jakarta, also spend there two days, and 
Then I leave Indonesia, but before I arrive to Taipei, I will spend two days in Manila, the capital of the Philippines, because I have never been there and the flight ticket was cheap. So two days of Semarang, two days of Jakarta, two days of Manila. Actually, I read in the morning that the volcano is spitting ashes near Manila and they closed the airport, but I hope they will open it until Saturday. I will spend this night in the Manila airport. I found a lounge where I could take a shower and it's not free, I had to pay 700 pesos, but they have unlimited tuna sandwich, so I think it's a good business. Now, I'll be in Taipei next morning if the Tal Volcano doesn't erupt. And I think this is a good opportunity to finish the first episode, so I will go and edit the video, render the video, upload the video, and then you will watch the video and like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. Bye-bye.